Pugh. Pugh! That'll do it! That will do it! Pugh for Bournemouth! The roof of the gold fans is raised! Everyone here knows what that could mean to this football Hello everybody and welcome to the latest in the interview series on Back of the Net. Once again, we appreciate all your support and comments on our recent interviews and we certainly hope to run more of those over the next few weeks. Remember, subscribe to this channel and make sure you're getting advanced notifications of all our shows. Well, what can I say in this show? If you want goals, we've got it covered. I don't know if I'm talking Neil Dawson there. Neil, how are you? And were you a big goal scorer in your time? Um, well, I played up front and I got the odd one, but a million miles away from who we got on today, Jeff, that's for sure. Yeah, well, I, I never came close either, so you're not alone. Um, yeah, we've got more goals than you could possibly want from our guest today. He was an, un, an impressionable young striker under Bill Shankly at Liverpool before plying his trade at York City, Bournemouth, Norwich City, Southampton and then Bournemouth again. Famously, he set an FA Cup record with nine goals in one game against Margate in 1971 and that still stands today. He answered his critics in style as the first division's top scorer in 75-76, rarely out of the headlines during the 1970s. He had a few turbulent periods too, never short of an opinion. He also has plenty to say about the modern game, so it will be very tasty to get his thoughts on all things AFCB. We are delighted to be welcoming Ted McDougall. So, so Ted, first first things first, I, I know you're join, joining us from America, aren't you? So, um, I'm yeah. in Florida at the minute, yes. Excellent. Well, look, we're going to take you right back, if that's all right, to the 1960s. And I want to know, were you a prolific goal scorer in your youth? And if you if you were, what, what do you think were the qualities that made you such a natural? Um, I, I, I like most kids in those days, that's all we ever did was play football. Um, I, I was born and brought up in Inverness, uh, north of Scotland. Um, I played for the school. I was a, I was a, I think it was a, uh, go, uh, centre half at that time and then I, and in the afternoon I used to play for the boys brigade at right wing so I could get two games in and then um, <clears throat> and then I started to play up front and you know there wasn't a really up front then <laughs> it was a case whenever the ball wherever the ball was you were so but I yeah, I just found it was it was something that was it was natural I mean I didn't have the ability of a lot of other players um, but I knew how to kind of score goals. And I think it's a feeling that you, you've got where you're actually drifting away as opposed to going towards the ball. You're drifting away into where you think the ball's going to go. And obviously then you've obviously got to anticipate things that are going to happen. So I think I must have had that somewhere in my locker, I suppose. Ted, you get your, your first involvement in the professional game in England was with Liverpool. What was your journey like? So how do we picked up from Inverness down to Liverpool, and, <laughs> and then how? Right. Um, what was it like working with Bill Shankly? Because obviously, some right. people say he's in the top top two, top three managers ever. Right. I, I mean, I've been very, very fortunate uh, in my decade or so of playing uh, to have been around or played with some of the greats. Um, I I was I left school at fifteen on the Friday and then I would start to work for the local newspaper on the Monday uh, and then I, it was a six year career as, as you had to go to school, you had to go to college. I, I went to college at, in Liverpool, um, same college that John John Lennon used to go to, um, Liverpool College of Art. <clears throat> and um, basically I was scoring goals because there was no youth then, there was no youth teams. Uh, so you played against men. Uh, and of course, you play against you know people that, that that were working all you know all week and stuff, and then they wanted to kick lumps out of you because I was only fourteen, fifteen, and and then I was scoring all these goals. And of course, 
they would they would have a cigarette before they went out before they played and then a, mm-hmm. and, a, and, a, and a bottle of beer um before they went out and then um you know if you went past them they would like you know if you do that again i'll break your so-and-so so-and-so leg type of thing so you kind of grew up very quickly um with regards to self-preservation i suppose um but i scored a lot of goals and then it, it turned out that my um my foreman uh knew somebody at liverpool who'd get me a trial he said if i can get you a trial at liverpool would you go i said oh yeah <laughs> i would go so i was like uh 16 um and 17 i think and i went on the tuesday and they were all there reuben bennett was there uh, joe fagan um uh, uh, bob paisley they were still all there on the on the evening and I, I went on the tuesday i guess i must have done okay when i was asked to go again on the thursday and then i I signed amateur forms uh, with Liverpool and I started in the C team and went into the B team and then I went into the A team, uh, still doing my apprenticeship as a, as a compositor and typographical design type of thing. Um, and then I was displacing pros because now I'm playing in the reserves. And then when we played it, like say, it, then at it, um, Anfield, if we, when we played Everton, we get ten thousand people there uh, to watch the reserves. So I guess I did okay with that because then I was asked to sign. I, I was asked to come in on the Thursday. By this time, I'd never met Bill Shankly, and I I went in and uh, and uh, I think it was Joe Fagan said uh, the boss wants to see you. I, I said, "Who's the boss?" <laughs> so. <laughs> So I, I I went I went in and it was it was Bill and and it's like it was like meeting God and um, it was I was so like wow and I remember I was on I think I was on at that time I was on uh, six or nine six pound a week uh, that was my what I got not from Liverpool uh, I was amateur but then he asked me to sign and I was going to get. Uh, 15 pound a week 16 pound a week i think it was and now it, w- it wouldn't have mattered if he gave me a pound a week it wouldn't have mattered and um he said but you know you have to speak to your to your mum and dad so i went home and of course the reason that they came down from scotland in the first place was to give me an opportunity you know because there wasn't much going on up in inverness so i said well, i've got the chance well at that time and i don't you know I a lot of kind of people listening it was a time when you were told there was a mantra going around get yourself a trade son you'll never be out of work that was what people said and it wasn't quite true which is a shock <laughs> because most things that people say are not true anyway but anyway so we we um they said what do you think do you think you can make it well you know i'm 17 for goodness sake eight, eight, no that time i was getting towards 19. And so i'd done four <laughs> years four, i'd done four years as an apprentice and i only had two years to go so for this to this day uh, i love my mum and dad because most parents would have said what just get the next two years out of the way and you'll be good okay you get that behind you well i they said if you think you can go for it if you can do it go for it and that's um that was fantastic and i went and i signed and um and then i had probably about 18 months and i was doing well and then i then i got i got some some sort of kind of things in my lungs and it was one of those when you get tired all the time it's got a name and i can't quite remember what it was and i was kind of lethargic and tired and by that time they just signed tony Haley, and i was playing in the reserves um, and and it was the year i think liverpool won the championship with 14 players all season that's all they used, 14 players. And I was one of the subs because there was only one sub. And you could pick the, the team. It was, you know, it was, you know, it was um, Jeff Strong, it was uh, Ronnie Yeats, Ian St. John, um, uh, Roger Hunt, you know, it was this Ian Callaghan, Peter Thompson. They all, it was the same team every week. And they won the champion, they won the, the, the first division. And I made uh, one, two, uh, um, substitute appearances i never got on though and uh and that was the closest i got and uh, anyway he, he got 
he got in that couple of offers and I went to and that was just so so pleased just to be playing and to be to answer your question Bill Shankly was was such a wonderful wonderful man I mean I just loved him I just I met him many years later and uh, spoke about things and stuff but one I'll give you one story about when because he used to he used to change with us in 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 the, in the visitors at Anfield every day and then we get the bus down to Melwood which they, I believe they just sold or got rid of um but we he would be in with all the young lads and we'd be in the big bath and we'd be playing we'd be playing Everton twice a year so we're playing Everton this Saturday and he came in and he sat and he sat there in the middle of the bath with us and and and, and he said he said because his house overlooked Belfield, which was Everton's training ground. And he said, and this is before psychology was even a word uh, in, in football. And he said, I've just been watching them training, son. They're near fit, son. They can't even play. They're, 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 their asses are so big. They're ripping all their effing shorts. And, uh, and the lads are going, lapping all this, like, wow. This is unbelievable. I mean, and we're like pumped up, and we're in the middle of the bath. It's like the the big bath. <laughs> Bill Shankly's holding court in the middle of the bath. <laughs> it's like wow, and I'll never forget that story. And uh, he was such a unbelievable. I mean, when he did training, he just walked round, and suddenly your passing got a little bit crisper, and, and everything else you did got a little bit sharper, you know, and uh, he, he was fantastic, absolutely fantastic human being. Uh, I, I loved him. I, I, I love Liverpool. I just love the club. Um, I think it's it, it sets you up properly as a person, or it did, I don't know. Obviously, that's changed now. And I, and I went through, I mean, I played with Kenny Dal Dalgleish, bless him. I played with him at, uh, for Scotland. I played with Graham Souness uh, with, with Scotland. He was my roommate. So, you know, they all of them went on to, with Liverpool and did fantastic. And it, it was, Liverpool is a, is a special, special club. Mm. Certainly is. I mean, you, you played with, uh, you played under Shankly briefly. I mean, only as yeah. Other only, in the but only in the bath. Only in the bath. Only in the bath. <laughs> and you, you also had you had Ron Greenwood manager. You had uh, Tommy Doherty. Oh. You had John well, Bond, no. of no. course, and uh, uh, Laurie McMenemy. I mean, which, which would you say if you could choose any of those managers, who was the best and why? Well, I think there's a difference between a, ma a manager and a coach. Um, I would say the best coach by far ahead of his time at that particular time was uh, was John, uh, John Bond. I I I I loved him too, and I I I had some real fights with him and arguments with him and stuff because that's what I was at that particular time. Um, and he handled me fantastic, and um, but as a coach, he was he was he was he was fantastic. Um, Best manager, I would have to say that was probably Laurie, uh, Laurie McMenemy, because because Laurie was handling a dressing room that was unbelievable characters. I mean, I had two of the best, funniest, greatest years at Southampton. Um, I mean, that's when 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 Shannon played, uh, Osgood, Ball, McCallyog. I mean, all of these people were big, big, not. Not big names, but they were big personalities. Alan Ball, I mean, Alan came on to be, you know, one of my best friends, um, and I just loved the the camaraderie. I mean, our hardest game was probably on a Friday morning in the gym. It's, it's, um, yeah, Friday morning in the gym at the Dell when the young lads played the old lads in the gym. I mean, we'd just kick lumps out of them. Why? Because they were there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, you know, and that game was like all off. I mean, it was all on and all off. It was like, here we go. Let's get kicking these guys. And that was Steve Williams and Nicky Holmes, uh, Peachy, all of those kind of lads. And Laurie was handling all this mm. and all these characters and all these different 
people and he was he was great at it he was great at it i mean he, i mean he used to i mean ozzy used to take the take the piss out of him all the time by kind of he, he'd be like wanting to do shooting practice and he couldn't trap a bag of wet cement you know what i mean i mean he was he saw it ozzy would kind of he'd be on the edge of the edge of the d or or or, or the or the penalty spot and he'd he'd kick the ozzy would we would play balls up to him and he would lay it off and we would try and finish. That was the the, the kind of drill. Well, Ozzy would smash these balls into him like, and I mean, nobody could handle them. And, and we were all take, taking the piss out of him. Like, come on, Gaffer. I mean, Jesus, this is awful. I mean, you couldn't trap anything you. I mean, it's bloody awful. I mean, how can we play with you when you're, you're, you're the one that's laying the balls off? So <laughs> we had that going on all the time, you know, and uh, it was... You had to be on your toes when with the banter. It was great. It was really great. He was an ex grenadier guard, wasn't he? Um, Laurie McMenemy was an ex grenadier guard, so maybe that well, helped. He, he had the feet for it because he didn't have the feet for football. <laughs> <laughs> you got. You had a, a after a spell at York City uh, where you you scored an awful awful lot of goals in a in a team that wasn't that successful. You, <laughs> well, you, to you, say we had to apply for re-election the two years I was there. I know. It, I scored 40 goals in two seasons and we got we we finished fourth from the bottom with the fourth division it was two years I was there so I made a big difference there it must have been it must have been the defense just think where they would have been without you the no, um... no, no. Well, still still relegated or, or, or reapplying I should say the um you you then wound up at Bournemouth how did that how did that move come about did someone come and scout you or what was um well I I mean I I guess I mean, we had a, we had some managers there at York City. One of them was Joe Shaw, who was the centre half. He played a couple of games for England, Joe, and he was only only small, but he was a he was a good player, good man as well. And he got fired and stuff. And then a lad, another lad come in, Tom Johnson, and oh my goodness me, he would he'd have his pipe, he'd be kind of puffing his pipe, and you know, and uh, he had like bicycle clips for his to keep his. Uh, <laughs> his his, his um, tracksuit bottoms tight at the bottom, you know, and he, oh my god, it was awful. And I, I, I and I couldn't. I was on twenty. I was on twenty one pound in the in the winter and twenty four pound in the summer. <laughs> and I, so, I, and every year you went in to see them, and they were. And I, and I, I had my mate, a lad that became my best man, and I said, he was going in after me. I said, well, I'll tell you what I get. So the manager says, I'll give you £21. You've done well, son. I'm going to give you another season. Because they all called you son, because I don't think they knew what your name was. And uh, and I would say, he said, I'm going to give you £21 in the summer and £24 in the, in the, in the winter. So... I go out, I say, okay, boss, all right, I'll take that, great. Go outside, I said, £21 in, in the summer, £24 in, in the winter. So Tommy goes in, he says, well, you've not had a great season, I'm going to give you another season. I'm going to give you £18 in, in the summer and £24 in the winter. He said, well, no, you, you offered Ted £21 uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the summer. He said, well, he's a better player than you. He said, well, he said not in the summer, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we, we digress. <laughs> so, so, so you came down to Bournemouth. Freddie Cox who signed you, wasn't it? And, yeah, yeah and, Freddie was great. He was fantastic. Uh, Freddie he had so, the mohair suits on, mohair suit on, and uh, yeah. little MG, MGB. Had the, he had the news agent. At, and, um, and, a, and the clinching part of the deal, Ted, was a pair of curtains. Was it not? Eh, uh, no, 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 no. Eh, uh, uh, no, yes, it was, actually. It was, um, uh, yeah, I, he offered me, I got £28 a week uh, from the £24. Or I, I think I got a £1 raise in York to 25 So I got a £3 rise. And uh, and I asked for curtains. Cause we had, there was no agents, so I thought, I'm going to ask for curtains but not just any curtains these were velvet and velvet red curtains now bearing in mind i never had a house <laughs> but i thought i want i want the curtains 
<laughs> so he said, okay, you're on. So I got, I got the curtains. So I guess I better buy myself a house, get a house or something, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to hang these damn curtains. Like I'd, like I'd, like I'd, I'd, come, I'd gone through hell to be like my own agent. I want the, instead of me saying, give us 500 quid or something. No, I, I want the velvet curtains. So, they were a big thing then. And, <laughs> and they went with a velvet suit. And um, so that was that. And, um, and then, and we were, we were tipped to get promotion that year at Bournemouth because they, had, they were in the third division uh, and they just missed out. Well, they bought, they got me, bought me for 10,000, I think it was. And then they got um, Trevor, uh, uh, Trevor, Trevor Hartley. Hartley. Yeah. And they got John, uh, John, um, oh, what was it, John's last name? I can't remember now. And he was, he was, John Tainty? no, not John, John, not, John not, Benson. John, no, no, John, John didn't come till later. Um, John Mary, um, Mary, um, oh my goodness, if some, if you said that, no, so I can't remember, I'm sorry about that. Um, but anyway, he got us, I'll look it up. <laughs> and then he had, he had Ralph, he had, he had Ralph uh, Miller, he had, um, he had um, Stocksy, uh, Gully, um, and then he had the, the really good goalkeeper, Roger, Roger Jones, who was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last game of the season, I think it was, was Gillingham. Uh, that not for us, but Gillingham were playing somebody, and I, I think they got beat, I think. And this, this team stayed up and we went down. And I thought, well, that's great. That's my first three seasons from leaving Liverpool. I think I'd scored about that time. I think I got about 20-odd goals that season. So it was like I got about, what, 60-odd goals in three seasons. But <laughs> and to re reapply for, reapply for um, to get back in the league and, and won relegation. So I thought, this is great. This is good. I'm doing well here. John so, Meredith. John Meredith. John, yeah, Merrill. Yeah, Merrill. Bless him. Yeah, he was. Meredith. He was my. He was my. Uh, he lived next door to me, for for a couple of years. Um, up in um, uh, near Ringwood. Um, I'm trying to remember all the names. I can't remember now. And um, anyway, so uh, I thought, oh, that's good. So then John got the job. Who was the, he? Was the coach uh, with Kenny, Kenny Brown? Bless him. Uh, at um, um, well, John was it was it uh, the coach at um, Gillingham, and of course Gillingham didn't win their game, so we went down. So we that was a double whammy. So we were doubly kind of pissed off, you know. Mm -hmm. he, well, we're going to get the, the the coach from Gillingham, and they got releg and they got us relegated really indirectly. Mm -hmm. And John came in, and he was he was bigger than life. He was he was phenomenal, and he was just. He was just very charismatic, uh, and always had this the suits on, or kind of, he always looked great. He always looked really, really good, and and he and he he applied himself well, and he could play, and he could strike these great balls, you know. And uh, he was, and he had Kenny with him as well, who was a great, great foil for him. John Bond was um, seen as a very innovative coach. Um, yes. What did he do with you in particular? So what what would you say he Oh. What did he do to change your game? Because you you moved from being uh, a very good goal scorer to being uh, an incredible goal scorer. How, what role did he the, play? In that? Well, I th think the difference was that I scored goals, but didn't know why I scored goals. And then we started to work on 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 movement, and I, and I, and I, and I'm, my movement was 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 pre was pretty good because I. I was like a sponge because it was like it was about holding space, moving into space, taking people away. Uh, you see, if you look at the Premier League now or any of these other leagues, uh, you'll find that most strikers will make one run to the near post or one run to the far post and the ball doesn't come for whatever reason. Now, the one who used to do a lot, when you, if you think back to... Um, uh, when Chicharito was playing for Manchester United and he was getting a lot of goals and what happened was which is typical of Manchester United because everybody's playing for themselves the ball wouldn't come when he'd made the run 
So what did he do? He stopped making the runs. And as soon as he stopped making the runs, he didn't get the service and he didn't get the goals. Uh, so I kind of knew about my angles. And it was a time when you could drag people to the far post and come back into the space at the near post. And all we did all week was get me end product because I was so domineering uh, that you better get it in because you've made, I've made my run on the angle that you've made on the fullback. Yeah. So as soon as they've made the angle, because I'm making my run. So that was, I mean, I scored a, a ton of goals like that. And I was I was good in the air. I mean, I, um, I was five five eleven. I think I'm down to five ten now. It's funny how you kind of just <laughs> wither away to nothing. And um, it's it was something that we did all week. I mean, people talk about the Aston Villa goal. That Aston Villa goal was something that that we worked on because if you look at the Aston Villa goal, you'll see after the layoff that I've made. I'm now making my way to the far post. Now, Tony Scott now is making his way into the box. But the people that don't know about this don't realise how much Phil Boyer played in that goal. Because Phil Boyer took the other defender underneath the ball. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. He took him to the near post and he took him out with the space that I was going in. So he, he, he created that goal, even though he never touched it, uh, mm -hmm. Charlie Boyer. And that's the type of things that we did. It was really very, uh, it was really intelligent movement. Uh, it wasn't just off the cuff stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, who became a, a, a good friend of mine, uh, Martin Bucken, and, and, and Martin was with me at, at, um, uh, at Manchester United. And, and uh, Scotland as well. And I, when I left Manchester United and went back to play, play Manchester United, he spoke about me and, and, and Charlie Boyer, uh, about how intelligent the runs were and how difficult it was. Mm. Uh, so it wasn't, it wasn't just luck. Mm. It, it, John, John Bond's staff, wasn't wasn't luck it was it was just repetition 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 and not taking the extra touch because once you make the space the ball's got to come in yeah and we can talk about we can talk about the team to the, the, that's playing now for Bournemouth and they drive me nuts yeah, and I'm sure they drive everybody bloody nuts at the minute. But there you go. We can talk about that in in, in the next seven hours. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, so that you know, that's why the difference you asked me at the beginning was I scored goals before, which was just intuition. But and then once you start to realise what you what you're actually trying to do and accomplish. That that's when the light comes on. That's when I'm like, wow. And the one that I see has got it the most and had it for years, bless him, is uh, Aguero. Mm. Yeah. He would be, he would be, if you see his runs, wow. Mm. Because yeah. nobody else is really doing it. And Ted, you, you played with Phil Boyer at York City, didn't you? Did you tell John Bond that he must sign him if you were going to yeah. get promoted? Absolutely. Absolutely. He was going, I think Phil was going somewhere else. And I said, you got to get this lad. I said, he's, he's, he's special. And because he did, the great thing about Charlie is like, we were like the odd couple, you know, he would, he would, um, <laughs> he would do all the kind of, all the stuff that I hated. Which was nearly everything, really. <laughs> he did all, he did all the work, he did all the running, he went down the channels, he showed, he linked the play, and my job was really to to get it, knock it, and get far post, get in the box. 
That's all I ever tried to do. That's all I did was get in the box. I didn't get involved in the other play. I see, I see, you know, centre forwards like let's say Giroud and all. The, they're, uh, you know, they're they're they get involved in other things on the right wing. Well, how the hell are you going to score a goal if you're on the right wing or the left wing or whatever? How how how, how do you score? You know, your chances are are, are predominantly higher if you get, get in the box. So I wanted to get in the box now. There's not much space in the box, so you better know about your angles and your movement and your and your appreciation of what you're trying to do. What was well, the question? <laughs> <laughs> two, talking about making good runs and games that produce goals. Two, two, the two games that a lot of Bournemouth fans remember you for is the two FA Cup games. Uh, I think Oxford City and Margate, uh, where. Um, I think you scored 15 goals in those two games, uh, six and nine. If my maths, if my maths is uh, still working, what um, what were your recollections of those games, and how does it feel coming off a pitch having scored that many goals? Because it's it's incredibly unusual. Well, the six goals was the season before, I think. Yeah, um, and then because I think we drew at their place in Oxford. We, I think we drew nil nil or one one something like that, uh, and then we played them played them at uh, Dean Court, and then um, I think it was that. Yeah, you 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 uh, drew at their place and it was a replay. There you go, and then so that was the season before. So the nine goals in Mar against Margate was because I was. I never realised, or nobody realised, it was was a was a record, um, and I was kind of semi kind of pissed off anyway because I, we won eleven nothing, and I should have got the other two, um, and because Mel Machin got up for a corner kick, which I, I don't know what the hell he was doing there, but I was just about to head it, and he got in front of me, and he headed it in. I remember that, and um, for the life of me, I can't remember who scored the other goal, but. Um, but so I should have got the eleven, um, but I only got the nine. And then, but I was, I had the sports shops at that particular time, and we were going up to London, uh, and it was about I don't know we had dinner or something. It was about probably getting close to eleven, eleven o'clock at night, maybe midnight type of thing. And we said, oh, let's go down to Fleet Street and see if there's anything in the papers about it, just a little bit or something. So. My God, it was all over the press. So I said, God, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. And and then I went to the to the trade show, uh, I don't know, it was Earl's Court or somewhere, and just looking around at, you know, all the different kind of things that people were selling and stuff. And they were asking for me over the tannoy. And um Martin Chivers was there and stuff and and I thought, well, this is a this seems to be a big deal, and I didn't realise it was a it was a it was a record uh, until till then. Some record, by the way. Well, I always thought because records you always think they're going to be broken, but I mean the way it goes today, I mean it's it's hard enough to get nine. Well, it's not too hard unless you're Southampton. They seem to let nine in all the time. <laughs> but I won't I won't mention that. No, no, uh, you, can this, you can on this show. Every, every, <laughs> yeah, we don't care every, actually. Yeah, you can mention it every minute if you want. I thought, and then um, you know, but for one person to get the nine is 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 going to be a little bit a little bit more tricky probably. And uh, so that was, I mean, that's gone on now for what's that? Fifty years, is it? Yeah, yeah. My God, uh, I, was only, other... I was only six. <laughs> <laughs> the other uh, the other thing about that promotion season was you scored forty nine goals. I yeah. mean, do you do you look back on that and think, oh, that chance I missed, I could have had fifty? No, 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 more than that. I thought I, sh I should have beat Dixie Dean's record that year. Really? He got sixty. He got sixty. I was upset because I should have scored. I I, I felt I could have scored. When I look back on it, I thought I could have scored. I could have got 60 goals that season. Mm. And that was disappointing. That would have been something. <clears throat> so the, the, the other thing that I remember growing up in Bournemouth was that you were 
how can I put this, a bit of an entrepreneur. Uh, you opened a string of sports shops in the area. And mm. and I sort of think back, think to the current day and wonder whether Callum Wilson ought to be maybe have, have, have opened a shop and been selling shin pads <laughs> to impressionable young kids before playing <laughs> footy in the afternoon. Because so many times I went down to the town and got your autograph on, you know, bags of stuff with Subutio teams in and everything. So what what made you get into retail and, and start doing what you were doing then? Uh, well, I, I met um, a lad who became very close, him and his wife, um, George and Megan Webb. And um, George was building houses uh, for McLean's. And that's where me and Trevor Hartley and John Meredith all bought houses uh, up there at uh, Westmore's. Westmore's it was. Now, and so he w was talking about so talking about what you're going to be doing and this that and the other well i mean at that time i was what 24 23 24 well, i didn't know and he said well you know, why don't we open a shop and i said well yeah okay then because that's what you do i mean as you get older you don't do anything because you go oh hold on that might fail <laughs> but now you go oh okay that's all right yeah let's do that then and then we got one and then we got two and then we got three and then we had about five and then we had a cut price drug store and then we had a toy shop and stuff and um, and it was you know it was going reasonably well and um, so but I it gave me something to do in the afternoon and stuff and and then kind of meeting the meeting the you know the the, the kids and the fam and the and the fans and stuff it was that was really good um, so yeah so um that that team were big celebrities really in the town because John Bond elevated the, into a team much bigger than the league it was in. What was it like uh, living and going out in the town at the time? Did you used to go out bars, night clubbing, or were you more of a family man, or how did it work? Yeah, I mean, at that time, as you as you rightly say, um, uh, Bournemouth was getting the headlines in the national papers every, at least every week. There was something going on and it was it was exciting you know it was exciting to be part of it and obviously it was it was exciting for the fans to be to be part of it as well and um it was it was really really um it was yeah i used to go i mean go out and have dinner and stuff like this and you know that type of thing but uh generally you know, I, I I didn't really go out out that much um, in, the, in those days, um, but you know, it was it was something that you know we were we were we were pretty much pretty much hogging the the limelight for uh, over the kind of first division players at that particular time. And at the time, I mean, we got promoted uh, seventy seventy one season from the old division. Well, the old Division Two to Division One, what if if we call about it now, and then we were being bankrolled, weren't we, by the chairman Harold Walker, who mm -hmm. kind of reminds me a bit of Max Denham at the current setup. You know, like he put a lot of money into the club. He was determined that we were going to go places. And what are your recollections of of the mood of of all the new players that came into the club and just that excitement around going for promotion against Aston Villa and Brighton? Uh, I mean, at that time, um, I mean, Mr. Walker, Harold Walker. I mean, as we, as as people know, he, he was a solicitor, and he used to have the little glasses on the edge of his nose, you know. And uh, he was just a very wonderful English gentleman, if you if you know what I mean. He was he was he was terrific man, wonderful person. And I've I've got to say that even to, to to present day, Bournemouth and the and the people within and surrounding the club have always been really really nice people, and I I don't mean that to for any to suck up I I just think that they are they're very very nice people, and and I think that comes across. It came across later obviously with eddie and different stuff and just wonderful people and 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 mr walker was was just one of those and and there was there was other people on the board as well and they were they were they were wonderful and um he 
he bankrolled it, but not to the degree, uh, let's, you know, because it wasn't the money in it. I remember when all the new players were coming in, because I'd already been there for the first year. And as I mentioned, I was on, I was on £28 a week. Well, I know that all the players that were coming in, John Benson and Mel and all those, uh, I think that they were all on £35 a week. That's what they started on. And so it was Christmas. And we were up in Blackpool. We were playing, uh, I think we were playing Southport and somebody else. And we stayed up for a few days. And it was, that, was a, that was the season we were in the fourth division. And I, when, when I scored the 49 goals. And I, I, I'd scored 20 odd goals by Christmas or something like that. So he, John Bond stopped me in, in, the, in the corridor of the hotel and he said, if you, if, if, now if I've got 200 pound in the bank, I, I had a lot of money, <laughs> you know. So he said, I'm going to give you, if you'll stay till the end of the season, I'm going to give you the same as the rest of the lads, 35 pound a week. And he said, because I've been expecting you to knock my door down. I said, no, I signed, signed the contract and stuff. I knew what the other lads were on. He said, I'll give you £35 a week and I'll give you £2,000 if you stay to the end of the season. Wow. Now, I just rolled my sleeves up and thought, OK, which door do you want me to knock down? I mean, you know, OK, let's go for this then. Mm. I mean, it was phenomenal. So to finish that story, because it's quite a good story, uh, at the end of the season, we got promotion to the third division. That was the fourth division. And I got started again, and I, was, and I got 40, 40 odd goals. So at the end of that season, I went to see Mr. Walker with a. I've now got um, an advisor with me. <laughs> so the, the velvet <laughs> curtain was gone. <laughs> that, that, that era of velvet curtains had gone. You know, it was like I was. I then got a hundred pound a week. Now, the average player then in the first division or Premier League was on about fifty, sixty quid a week, and that was that year. Yeah, and then. And then I got the 42 goals and I went in. Sorry, that's when I went in for the second time. So I was on £28, £35, £100. I forgot that bit. £100, a contract that time. And then in the third in the third division, I scored 42 goals. And then I was on, and then I was on £150 a week and a five-year contract. And now the first division, when I went to Manchester United, I got, they could only give me £10 a week raise because Bobby Charlton, wow. George Best were on £160 a week. Wow. And I That's so incredible. I didn't leave Bournemouth because of, because of money. Yeah. I left Bournemouth because I wanted to just have the opportunity to spread your wings if you like and try to yeah. see it could it work could i do it at a higher level yeah. um, and football being football you don't get many opportunities and chances and it wasn't because i was disloyal or whatever mm. and and i do remember going on to that story the last game that i played for Bournemouth, and i think i scored and i went in because now the press are hounding me and and it's on it's it's it's, it's on the it's on, it's on everything. And I was in John's office at the end of the game and I was I was crying. I was just crying. I said, I, said, I can't handle this anymore. I said, I, I just can't handle it. And he, he put his arm around me and stuff and said, okay, all right. And then the following week, um, Manu came in with 200,000. And um, and that, and and a, and a, and a ten pound a week rise. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> before we before we move on to Manchester United, we we can't not talk about the Aston Villa game, particularly as Jeff's had a T-shirt printed by the looks of like that. Look. For the uh... you see that it's got your signature, Ted. So you signed this for me twenty years ago as part of the Ken Dando appreciation or the Ken right. Dando stadium appeal thing. Yeah. So it still fits you then. Still fits me, yeah. This is this is it's been it's been kept in a in a museum around the corner from me for the last twenty years. First time I've worn it. So I mean, I always think you know, if ever you want a story of the richness of the English game, to have forty eight thousand people in the third tier of any level of football anywhere in the world just demonstrates, uh, you know, how massive a sport it is in this country. What was it like being part of that? The build up to it. What what are your memories of it? Yeah, well, from the from from the beginning, you know, the, I think it was only two teams that went up. I think, and we finished third that season. And um, I remember the game vividly. Uh, I remember the pitch being well. You've only got to see the pictures of the pitch, and it was like it was awful. Um, and like you say, forty eight thousand. I think it only got beat a few years ago uh, with Sheffield Wednesday and Sheffield United. I think at that level and then we then we scored and then they had a lad called um andy Lo andy lohood and and we had david jones playing center half and and jonesy was at that time a young young lad and uh andy low we kind of kind of bossed him a bit and we got beat i think it was two one or whatever it was and um we didn't we weren't quite we weren't quite uh, good enough and um it was disappointing because it stopped the momentum that we had going i think that was the biggest thing that the, the momentum the the charge that we had going from the season before and it was disappointing you know and uh, that was the game where you know wow and then we played him down at down at dean court and i think there was 20 odd thousand there they were hanging off the rafters there uh, and the floodlights and everything um, and I think we won that one three one or something. I, I can't quite remember. I think it was three, three nil. It was Ted three nil. Three nil. Okay. And um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was just it was disappointing because it stopped the m m momentum. And people said, "Well, would you have stayed?" Probably would have done, I suppose, because it'd have been it would have been a challenge to go into the into the to the second division, the championship. And it, it was the season after, wasn't it, when three went up? So it was like the last season yeah. when it was two yeah. going up. It was such a heartbreaker. Yeah, yeah it was but, disappointing. But when you went to Manchester United, so in that Manchester United squad that you, you were dropped into, there was Dennis Law, Bobby Charlton, George Best. I mean, and you're there, a, a young lad coming from Bournemouth, and they've, they've won the European Cup a couple of years previously. I mean, what, what on earth was that like? It was, um, well, I mean, I played at home, my first game at home, and we won one nothing, and I scored with a near post header. So I was, I was flying. It was fantastic. Uh, and as you, as you can imagine, to, to score on your home deep, uh, debut was something else. But um, I, I quickly found out, you know, that Manchester United, and they haven't really changed to this day, is you you either sink or swim uh you get somebody like today you got somebody like bruno fernandez who is who's swimming okay he's, he's, he hit the ground running he's he's done fantastic he turns the whole team around and then you got somebody like say daniel james and daniel james came in the first three or four games he does the same thing gets it back onto his right foot curls it in boom fantastic then defenders find out what he can and what he can't do he's not he's not he doesn't know the game he doesn't know he hasn't gotten the trick and he struggled so man united been what man united always do they don't spend any time with that with him they didn't spend any time with me and they just oh, okay we get we got to get another guy in there and that philosophy i don't think has ever changed in manchester united because what you see is what you get yeah and, you, and that's why you don't know how they're going to perform from week in week out because it's like well who are we going to buy now then who's going to get next and when i went there 
they were, I think they were around about fourth off bottom. Bad move for me. Great move for the, for, for, to say, you know, the opportunity to play for Manchester United. And that was fantastic. Mm. And everything that goes with it. But it's such a, a goldfish bowl. It's not, it's like, if you can imagine if you're an actor and you're in a play and you're playing in the provinces, you're in York or you're in Leicester and stuff, and then you get the opportunity to go to the West End. That's Manchester. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And you, I mean, your second manager there was Tommy Doherty, um, who passed away, uh, obviously, uh, a month or two ago. Yeah. What was, he, 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 there was a lot of stories around him. Was he a, a decent guy? Do you enjoy playing for him or? A bloody nightmare. Was he? Yeah, a nightmare. Um, Frank O'Farrell got me there, took me there. And then Frank got fired after I was there about maybe, I don't know, maybe two months maybe. And we got beat four or five at Crystal Palace. And that was his last game, Frank's. And at this time, Tommy Dock uh, was coming in. I always remember sitting with Willie, Willie Morgan and Willie says, oh, you know, he's going, he's going, he's getting the job. He said, uh, Tommy Dock. I went, oh God, no, that's me gone then. Uh, and because the reason I know that, I knew that was because when I scored the nine goals, because we missed, we missed that bit. I, John John Bond got a call on the Monday after the nine goals from Jeff Hurst. Jeff Hurst had a testimonial at Upton Park where there was a World Eleven going to play against West Ham for his testimonial. And he wanted me to play. And I went up to London, uh, Park Lane, I think it was, I can't remember the name of the hotel, the Hilton, I think it was. And he was the manager of that team for the for the night and i mean we had i mean i'm now playing with eusebio i'm, play, I'm playing with uh, jimmy johnson dave mckay jimmy greaves all these uh, and then there was two or three that had played the world cup for for germany um and i and i'm coming from the third division and i'm going wow and there's all these kind of celebrities and stars at West Ham to the game. And we're playing, I'm playing against uh, Bob, uh, Bob uh, Bobby Moore and, 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 and Jeff Hurst and, and all these lads. And anyway, I, I get on and I, I, I score. And anyway, he, he took me off at half time. And, um, and I, I, I thought, well, this is not going to be good. So when he went to Manchester United, I thought, well, he obviously doesn't fancy me. And at that time, he was buying everybody, as they do, as usual. Um, and he brought a lot of kind of um, Scottish lads. You know, Mark, um, I'm not sure he got Martin, I think. Martin might have been there already. But he, Lou McCullery. Lou, he bought Lou and he bought uh, Jim Holton and a few others. And um, and then it it would just it was it was a terrible you know what what you call it take the piss all the time all the time you like you go in and I'm trying to get away now and he said yeah we, yeah we've had a couple of offers from um, the third division I'm going like, oh okay and he would he make you feel crap. And Ted, when, when when you were at United, George Best was in his prime, wasn't he? Did you? How did George take to you? And did did you ever have any share any of his Playboy experiences? Yes, <laughs> and George was fantastic. George was he was the best player I've ever I've ever seen and and, and played with, and I was lucky to play with a lot. Of, um, George was an enigma. I mean, George could do it, everything. I mean, he could tackle, he could he could head it, he could score. He was good on the game. He kind of knew he could play balls through. He, he could obviously dribble. He could. He was quick. Could run. 
I mean, he had a good engine. He, I mean, if you do 440s or 220s at times, we used to, I mean, he'd be right up there. Um, but he was, he'd lost it by the time I got there. I mean, he was, he'd gone AWOL, he'd gone missing at times, you know, down in London. And, um, but I, 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 I thought a lot of George and I got on, I, I got on well with George. I got on well with those types of characters. I don't know why, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> uh, he was, he, he was, he was great with me. And Dennis was, Dennis Law was, cause he was my hero when I was growing up as a kid. I loved Dennis and Dennis would take me for a cup of tea, always drunk cups of tea. And uh, he was fantastic. Dennis was great. And, um, yeah, I didn't really have any real problems with the players. It was just the management. And then Ron came in and, oh, my God. And anyway, he wanted me to play. He played without a centre forward, which was quite revolutionary for those days. So I would play like a, a, a left winger. And Clyde Best would play like a right winger. And we'd be crossing balls in for Pop Robson and, yeah. um, and, um, and Trevor, Trevor Brookin to come in late. So the, in other words, the two central defenders didn't have anybody to mark. Yeah. So we would get these balls in and it worked all right. in the first bit I was there that towards the end of the season and he was telling John Bond, he said, oh, I didn't realize he could do this, this and this as well. But he took so much away from my game and he was a, he was a nightmare as a, as a manager. I mean, he, he couldn't, he couldn't pick anybody up. I mean, he was he was he was good on the game and stuff. And my touch got better in training because you're playing with these players and it's really tight tight situations and you, you your touch had to get better. Uh, Ted, so that... Ted, we Ted, we've we've talked for about an hour already. How would you feel if we came back and did Norwich to the rest of your career as part two? Maybe this time next week. Absolutely. I mean, I'm, I have no problem. As I say, I've got, hey, I want to speak about the game. I want to speak about Yeah, the game. exactly. We want to talk about that too, you know. We want to, we, it's great hearing about your career and that's fantastic for all us fans. But absolutely, we want to, we want to get your thoughts on, you know, Eddie no, leaving I, and where the team are at the moment and all that sort of thing too. I mean, you're either going to be politically correct or, or you We're not politically correct. correct. We're not politically correct. We're not no. at all correct. Or you're going to, are you going to speak? Because what happened uh, to finish that off was that when I went back a few years ago and I, and I, I was talking with Eddie and stuff and, and Jason and stuff, and I love those guys. And I spoke to Eddie and I said, well, thanks, Eddie. I said, you, you've made me from a supporter into a bloody fan. So I'm now a bag, bag of nerves every time I watch, I can't watch the game. I said, I just can't enjoy it anymore because I'm, it's a bloody nightmare. It's, it is it's a bloody it's nightmare, nightmare, particularly yeah. at the moment. So yeah. <laughs> well, no, no. if you're well, up, I, if you're up, if I, I if you're up for that, if you're up for that, we can we can call yeah. time now because these it's been honestly it's been brilliant talking with you, and I want to hear so much more. I know there's more to come because we haven't even talked about Alex Stock yet, and I know you have got stories about him. I'm sure. Oh God, I. Oh yeah, God, no. I. Well, that's what <laughs> happens when you're when you're when you're 95. You got. A lot yeah. to talk about. <laughs> No, it's fantastic. So, so look if um, if if you if I'll send you a link, another link during the week. Yeah, yeah. and we'll we'll um, do same time next week. No, it's not a problem. And as I say, I just hope it's it's entertaining for the for the for the. Oh, fans oh no! It's, oh yeah, it's brilliant. It's gold. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, but uh, no, no. So no, everything else is good. And um, as I say, it's just um, I'm really. It, it, this, this is this is troubling times now at Bournemouth. It and, really um, is, yeah. And, and yeah, they've they've got to make the right decision here because I was looking, I was I was looking in the in the championship, and there's roughly about seventeen teams that are were Premier League teams. Yeah, and they've not got back most of them, and the reason's been, as you know, is because of either ownership or management choices. And this is this is big. This is big. Yep. Yeah, no, we they may, we all we all feel it. Well, Ted, great having you on the show. 
I'm really looking forward to picking up the rest of your career and hearing more stories and also getting your views on the, the current Bournemouth squad and, and what it's like to be watching them from where you are in Florida. And uh, yeah, see if you've got any tips for uh, for us to, to make that promotion push. Neil, did you enjoy that? Loved it. Loved it. It was just fantastic hearing stories about we don't get many people that can relate to legends of the game um, in the way that uh, Ted can and, you know, having people that played with George Best and, you know, played with Dennis Law, just incredible hearing the stories. And then obviously the Bournemouth time, a bit before my time, but I've heard so much about it from older fans. Just great to hear it live out the mouth. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. You know, he's, uh, he, he was the first celebrity. Well, he was our George Best in Bournemouth. You know, he was the, he was the icon that, that really got football going for, for my generation. And, uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of fans got into the game in the 70s, stuck with us through the tough times and are, are still fans uh, today. So for everyone out there, I hope you've enjoyed listening to that. Like I say, Ted will be back next week for more. We can't wait for that. And uh, yeah, for those of you watching, um, you'll also have noticed uh, from social media that we're doing a competition. Uh, we've got three copies of the McDougall book written by Neil Vacher, uh, historian at Bournemouth and Ted McDougall. We're giving those away. Thanks so much for all your entries. And in the meantime, make sure you tune in for next week's show. Uh, we've got loads more content coming up for you on Back of the Net. Neil, thanks for your help today. It's been great to chat. And uh, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned in for more AFC Bournemouth content coming up. Up the cherries and Keep well, everybody. Stay safe. My name is Neil Vacher, club historian at AFC Bournemouth, and I'm also the co-author of McDougall, the Ted McDougall story. We're giving away three copies of this book to Cherry's fans who can answer this question correctly. Who was the first manager to sign Ted to AFC Bournemouth? Send your answer now to Back of the Net and then listen in to the Back of the Net interview on Sunday to find out if you're one of the lucky winners. Good luck.